Okay, now I'd like to welcome ThoughtWorks, a presentation from the company that's been helping us do some development work with the materials that you just heard with Forum Governance. And so Satmyo Mahaswari and James Lewis. Hello, afternoon all. Um, we are really thrilled, first of all, to be part of the OSDU now and uh, having the opportunity to have worked with uh, the OMC when we were uh, during the Paris Summit and the opportunity to just present some of our thoughts here. Um, so my name, just quick introduction, my name is Sapna. Um, I had customer experience, product management and design function for ThoughtWorks in the UK and Europe. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Phil. Can we hear? I can probably just shout, but then the recording. <laughs> um, hi, I'm James Lewis. Uh, I'm a technical director with the ThoughtWorks, also in London. Um, I should apologize. This is the only shirt I can get to fit me post, uh, post lockdown. So that might be why I'm yeah, dressed a bit like this. But anyway, over to you, Sam. Uh, great. So in the next, we've, we've got 10 or so minutes. So in the next few minutes, what we really wanted to do was uh, share with you all some of our experience and best practices in how organizations set up for successful delivery. Now, of course, the OSDU context is very, very nuanced. It's a community-driven, open-source construct. And what we do want to say is while some of what you will see is applicable a lot of times to traditional organization, we hope that some of the principles might be relevant. Not everything that you see might be as is relevant, but some of the principles around value, what value means, how do you drive uh, product development and delivery based on value. Some of those principles might be relevant. So absolutely um, advise you to look at some of this, but the contextualization will be important. And Ian and team, as you were seeing, were already talking about a lot of bringing your context to some of what we are going to talk about to make it relevant for you. Um, so most of the organizations really, and all organizations to be honest, we are always thriving to provide the best experience to your customers, to your end users, whoever they are. Uh, and focus really on creating value for them and value for the business. Um, value and outcome, it was really interesting to hear a lot today about that focus on what are we here for and what are we trying to deliver. And that is becoming a commonplace language in most of the organizations. But where often things fall through when we see is it's very easy when you go in and start sort of get entrenched in the internal workings is how the focus quickly shifts from that value conversation to managing what to build and how soon to build it. And it goes into all of that around a deadline-driven way of approaching how to ship products. And that is where I think it comes back to how do you step out and look a little bit of the purpose, a lot of good, good discussion today about the shared purpose. And, and one of the anti-patterns we see is usually the connect or the disconnect here in uh, the strategy or the North Star vision that organizations have and how that translates into execution and the lack of the connection of the dots. I think Patrick m talked about connecting the dots and a lot of times that's where things fall through. And um, what we're talking about when we talk about successful organization is having that strategy and vision, which becomes a bit of that North Star, and that should guide the teams to think about how to charter the path to achieve that North Star. Strategy and vision aren't about dictating what teams should do at various levels. It is really about providing guidance that teams should take to drive that path forward to achieve the desired result that the collective is desiring for. What's also interesting is once the vision and strategy piece comes, right, uh, what you will see across the board, all organization, they are always going to be competing priorities. There's always something that's going to be more important. But how do you make those decisions and what frameworks have you got to make those decisions are really, really important. And that's where the value conversation becomes important and stronger. So what do you, what do you see there where you're talking about sort of lightweight governance, management and portfolio management and prioritization, that is where it's important to think about 
how do you manifest value in your context, in the OSD context, it could be value for the community, it could be value for the end users, it could be, uh, you know, how do you achieve that adoption? And how do you make those decisions to make sure that you're working on the highest value and most important things that will drive adoption? Now, this is important part of connecting the dots as well because once the vision and strategy is articulated to a second level of value manifestation, it, that becomes easier for the team because most of the, te most of the times you find the challenge is teams at the lowest level have to then think about what was the vision and strategy and how do we achieve it. And it's so far removed that it's very hard for teams to successfully understand what the impact is. And by bringing in Let's, we're using the word portfolio management, but it can be whatever is relevant for you all. But what we're talking about is this is where we start talking about the business value a little more holistically, the community value a little more holistically, and how the initiatives and the work overall that you're doing is beginning to deliver that value. And that then begins to provide a much cleaner view to the teams to say that's, we are, that's what we are aiming towards. And finally, when we talk about lean and agile de delivery teams, and we'll talk a little more about those teams uh, and what some of the attributes of high-performing teams are, but really the important thing is once everybody's connected up in terms of what you're trying to achieve, the teams should then be empowered to think about what is the best way to achieve uh, that desired result. And that means having the autonomy to make the decisions that you need to. It means having the cognitive or the all the sufficient, the self-sufficiency to remove the dependencies. And we'll talk about that later, so I won't cover a lot more in detail. And I think somebody talked about quality. It's actually quite important that the teams take the ownership and drive the end-to-end -end outcome of whatever they are working on, from building the product to delivering the product to um, ensuring that it's adopted to ensuring that the feedback that's there from the adoption comes back and then it's included. And what's important in all of this is you need to have lots of feedback loops because there's the thinking that's happening, there's the doing that's happening, and doing is always going to give you the most meaningful feedback which you need to put back into your thinking to make sure that the wheel or the machine or whatever, the whole community is driving in the right direction. Now, of course, as I said earlier, I'm caveating it that some of it is going to be nuanced in your context, but just based on the conversation from today, the idea of value, the idea of understanding how teams and capabilities come together to deliver the use cases or the workflows and having better understanding of that will naturally empower the teams to do more relevant work, which will then lead to adoption. So, all of these things that we have here needs to be nuanced, but I think there are many principles here that's going to be relevant for OSDU to embrace and for you all to contextualize and see what's, what's good in this, what's not, and take what is going to be relevant and drive forward to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. James. Uh, next slide, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we talk yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about autonomous teams. We're using teams here, but of course this is a team, the construct of a team is something we see in organizations, right? Um, I like the idea from, we've done a lot of open source work over the years, ThoughtWorks, right? So we've open sourced our own products, we've been involved in lots of big open source communities over the years. And the key thing with open source communities, I like the way the Apache Software Foundation describes them as do, what was it? It's uh, duocracy. That's it. Duocracy. There you go. A duocracy. I'll get the word out. Duopoly, I was going to say. It's different. <laughs> a du duocracy. It's about the people doing the work, not necessarily about a team that you set up as an organization. Of course, there are organizations here providing teams to the forum to do stuff. But actually, it's about the individuals and how individuals in a highly networked organization can understand where they fit. Right, can understand how they're able to you know, contribute most effectively and have that purpose and work on the stuff they want to work on. Right? This is not an organization where people can be told, you're going to go and work on that anymore. You know, you're going to go and work on that. That looks, that looks like it really sucks, but tough. You know? This is an organization where we want to be able to choose. We want, we want, we want to be able to uh, uh, work on the stuff that has purpose, as we said earlier. Um, but saying that, the idea of autonomous teams, you know, that, th there are some ideas from this, I think, some principles from this, right? What do we mean when we say autonomous teams? Cross-functional teams. Like, ideally, we want to be working as groups of people with a set of skills that complement one another.
other. That's really all we're sort of talking about, where we can be pointed in the right direction, understand, be aligned with the goal of the organization, and then have an autonomy to be able to work towards that goal on the stuff that we want to do. You know, if I'm an expert in, in data management strategy, I don't want suddenly to be told that I need to write lots of unit tests on a piece of software that I've got no idea about. So this is about you know, this, this idea of the people who are doing the work, carrying on doing the work, but understanding that there, there are effective constructs around like, autonomous teams with cross-disciplinary skills. And if we can build some of that and encourage that sort of communication between people, I think that will... Uh, that, will, that will stand the, the organization in good stead going forwards. I should point out as well that ThoughtWorks is a member of the forum as well. We're, we're not just being brought in as a consultancy to help with this. This is a set of skills that we're bringing. ThoughtWorks is a, I guess we've been working in this sort of way for many, many years now. So, you know, two of the Agile Manifesto authors work for us. And this is the sort of end goal, if you like, of a 30-year journey of us trying to understand how to align organizations of different types. Um, and I think we're probably out of time at the moment, so we'll probably skip on the side with a nod over there very much, <laughs> move on. Um, so I guess the homework really is, you know, taking on what the panel was saying earlier, right? How do we create this alignment? How do we, how do we get more stuff done? How do we do more stuff that we find as fun? Because this stuff should be fun. I'm a firm believer in, you know, if we're going to be a member of these sorts of things, we should be enjoying doing the work as well, right? So how do we align on that and take some of the ideas that have been sort of shown to work uh, and as homework, come up with um, how that could work for, for the forum. So I think that's, we'll leave it there, shall we? Yes. Yes, okay. Thank cool. you very Thank much. You.